Hey guys, so I'm going to start off my presentation today by asking you guys a question. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? There are some examples up there to help you guys think about it. So, okay, so what's the fascination with superheroes and fantasy? Why is the world obsessed over capes, tights, masks, and superhuman strength? What is it with our fixation on magical epic journeys, dark lords, and wizards? Well, the story is always a struggle between good versus evil, and it often happens on epic proportions. With fantasy, we're giving into the supernatural, and our imagination allows us to immerse ourselves into these realms as we follow a character's journey. With fantasy, we're taking a step into the unknown where the fear of the unknown becomes a voyage in itself. The definition of a superhero is someone who rises above their strengths and limitations to achieve something extraordinary while they embody the best in themselves. Some superheroes have these fantastical magic-like powers. Some superheroes were ordinary characters who were somehow injected with super serum venom, and some don't have any of these powers at all. But no matter the situation, a superhero is a flawed character dealing with everyday issues. Spider-Man, for example, was an orphan teen with the usual teen problems when suddenly he had the misfortune of being bit by a spider and his life completely changed direction. Superman was sent from a different planet and raised by his adopted parents before even realizing that he was Superman and here to save the human race. And then there's Batman, the dark and mysterious hero who witnessed the murder of his parents at a young age. And unlike some of his other superhero counterparts, he doesn't possess the superhuman abilities, but rather stays physically fit and relies on the fancy gadgets to help him catch the villain. These are heroes in our world. They grow in our world, they inhibit our world, and they fight for our world. And it adds to our sense of immersion when we seek to escape inside their epic journeys. Due to high box office earnings and the rapidly growing popularity of fantasy conventions and cosplay events, fantasy no longer just belongs to the nerds or the geeks. Everyone wants to be a part of it, and I'm just as guilty myself being a huge fan of Harry Potter, Doctor Who, and both Marvel and DC Comics. Last month, I actually attended the New York City Comic Con and stood in line for over two hours, yes, I know, call me crazy, to meet the legendary Stan Lee. I gave him a photo of my GSB directorial debut, Superheroes, and told him that it was a play that I directed about what superheroes do in their free time. Then suddenly, he paused, looked up at me, smiled, and said, that is the coolest thing. And I think I almost fainted on the spot. A compliment from the 93-year-old Marvel architect himself. Yeah, guys pretty cool. So, both Marvel and DC Comics have this inexplicable attention-grabbing power of pulling in new generations of fans by consistently bringing new superheroes to life through miniseries, movies, and new comic books. One of the recents includes the Avengers, an agency of who's who in the Marvel Universe. You have Captain America, Thor, Hawkeye, Hulk, Black Widow, and although all these characters have their stark differences, they learn how to work together and protect the world by respecting and trusting one another. Again, another situation that we can relate into the real world. The same goes for the much anticipated and soon to be released Justice League, a mixed match of DC superheroes where Batman struggles to enlist the help of the reluctant Aquaman to join his team. It is so much easier to immerse ourselves into the action-packed world of superheroes when we can relate to a superhero on some sort of level. It's always more riveting to root for the underdog, the ordinary person with these extraordinary powers. We want to be that superhero because we can relate to his or her situation. Also, our desire to experience an epic journey is what keeps our draw not only in the superhero worlds, but also in the fantasy and magical worlds. The newest Marvel character brought to the big screen is Doctor Strange, the perfect combination of superhero meets powerful magical sorcerer. An ordinary but gifted surgeon gets injured in a car accident and sets out on a journey to heal his hands through the power of the mystics. But fantasy culture and fandoms is not just restricted to all the superheroes and comic books that I've been talking about. It spills into everyone's viewing radar, whether we notice it or not. There's such a wide spectrum that there's something for everyone. You have wardrobes that open up into different universes, secret schools of magic, a mystical ring that rules. We've read about them, watched them, and discussed them. For TV shows, you have Once Upon a Time, where it's a mixture of magical fairy tale characters all living together in modern day Maine. Or you have Penny Dreadful, literature's most terrifying characters all lurking in the dark corners of Victorian London. Or you have series that take place in an apocalyptic setting like The Walking Dead. 
and other shows like Gotham, Arrow, and Supernatural. And then if we're talking about movies, we have Percy Jackson, The Olympians, The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, The Mortal Instruments, and then, of course, who can forget Star Wars and Star Trek. And then we have my personal favorite, which is Doctor Who, where the Doctor never dies, but rather regenerates and continues his adventures through time and space with his various companions. But of course, by far, one of the largest and most well-known modern-day fandoms is none other than Harry Potter. The coming-of-age story of the young orphan wizard is appealing to both young and old. He attends a secret magic school, but the story is set in modern-day England. Harry's difficult past makes him more relatable to us, because even after losing both of his parents, growing up receiving cruel treatment from those who are meant to give him love, and having the burden of being the only one that can defeat the darkest wizard of all time, Harry still overcame all these struggles. Harry is a survivor and an example to us that it is possible to overcome hard times. So even though we like to escape into these worlds to distract from our everyday problems, we somehow become fanatically intertwined into the story. Harry Potter deals with the aesthetic part of us. There is an entire theme park dedicated to this fandom where you can have a sip of butterbeer, have a wand choose you, take a walk through Diagon Alley, visit the actual sets, dress up like the characters, and it all adds to the sense of immersion and fun. To many Harry Potter fans, Hogwarts is our home, and we know that it's always going to be there. So, are we consciously seeking escape from our everyday problems when we step inside the world of superpowers, magic, and mysticism? Are we seeking an easy solution by turning to escapism? Yes, yes we are, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There is a misconception that fantasy, literature, and popular culture is of inferior quality, but really the opposite is true. With many fandoms, um, you get a sense of imagination. It's not like we're constantly learning facts all the time, because if we were learning just facts all the time, they would be morally useless, we would have a monotonous life, and we would be emotionally hollowed. We need a mixture of knowledge and imagination for a balanced mind and spirit. Fantasy takes a hypothetical situation and invites us to open our minds and make a connection with fiction and our social reality. Sometimes it is peppered with humor and sometimes with sadness, but in the end, it allows us to escape, to take a journey to the unknown and dream about the impossible. And what is not inspiring about that? Thank you.